Time Flight is the seventh and final serial of the 19th season of the British science fiction television series Doctor Who, which was first broadcast in four twice-weekly parts on BBC One from 22 to 30 March 1982. The serial is set at the site of Heathrow Airport in the 1980s and 140 million years ago. In the serial, the alien time traveler the Master Anthony Ainley attempts to use the power of the psychic gestalt being the Xerophon to power his damaged time machine. Topic. Plot The fifth Doctor, Nyssa, and Tegan, still mourning the loss of their former companion Adric, arrive at Heathrow and learn from Department C-19 that one of their Concords mysteriously vanished just before landing. Using another Concord with the TARDIS aboard, the Doctor and his companions join Captain Stapley and his crew to fly the same landing path. They appear to land at Heathrow, but the Doctor determines they have flown through a time corridor to 140 million years in the past, the illusion of Heathrow projected by a powerful psychokinetic field. The crew and passengers of the missing Concord believe they are at Heathrow but are enslaved to work under guard of plasmatons, humanoid blobs of protein held together by the psychokinetic field. One passenger, Professor Hayter, has seen through the illusion, and lets the doctor know that they have been forced to work by the mystic Khalid to break into a central chamber at a nearby citadel. As the doctor sets off to see Khalid, Shapley and Hayter attempt to break the other humans free of the illusion, while Nyssa with her emphatic abilities, is able to enter the central chamber freely along with Tegan to find the power source controlling the psychokinetic field. Nyssa briefly interrupts the power source, which causes Khalid's disguise to falter, revealing himself to the Doctor as the Master. The Master explains that he had been trapped in Earth's past after their last encounter, his own TARDIS damaged, and believed that he could repair it by acquiring the power source in the Citadel. He created the Time Corridor to obtain human slaves to help break the chamber open. However, now with the Doctor's TARDIS in his possession, the Master sets off in it to try to materialize in the central chamber. The Doctor finds that the humans have finally broken through the chamber, and he soon joins Nyssa and Tegan inside. They find that the power source is a gestalt intelligence of numerous Xerophon. Their ship had crashed some time ago, and to survive against high radiation levels, they took the form of energy in the Gestalt. However, when the Master arrived, his presence caused the Gestalt to develop a split personality, some willing to help the Master while others fighting against him. The Master is unable to materialize the Doctor's TARDIS into the chamber but instead uses it to create an induction loop to transfer the Gestalt to his TARDIS. On returning to his TARDIS, he finds that Stapley and Hayter have taken some of the key circuitry in their attempt to free the others, and he attempts to scavenge those parts from the Doctor's TARDIS. The Doctor proposes a truce, providing the spare parts including a temporal limiter, to repair the Master's TARDIS in exchange for dropping the psychokinetic field. The Master agrees, and quickly dematerializes when his TARDIS is ready. The Doctor ushers his companions and the freed humans to one of the Concords, and uses his TARDIS to bring them back to the present at Heathrow. He reveals he programmed the Temporal Limiter to have the Master arrive later than they did, and thus is able to prevent the Master's TARDIS from rematerializing. Instead, as the Doctor had programmed, it will now rematerialize on the Xerophon's home planet. After saying goodbye to Stapley and the rescued passengers, the Doctor and Nyssa leave, possibly believing though this is not stated, that since they got Tegan to Heathrow, she does not intend to travel with them anymore. Tegan races out of the airport as the TARDIS vanishes, upset at being left behind. Topic. Production The Concorde used for the production was GBOAC, the flagship of the BA fleet at the time. 
The registry can be read from the radar screen in the ATC scenes. The other registry, GBAVF, was not a Concorde, but a Beechcraft 58 twin engine light executive aircraft. Although his character had been killed in the previous episode, Matthew Waterhouse's contract extended into the filming of Time Flight, which is the reason for Adric's illusory appearance in Part 2. Tegan's apparent departure from the series was never intended to be permanent, but was planned as a sort of cliffhanger ending to the 19th season. She would later return in the second episode of the next story, Arc of Infinity. Topic. Cast notes Peter Davison has claimed that Time Flight was the biggest disappointment from his time on the series, stating it was a very good story, but we had run out of money. We filmed the prehistoric landscape of Heathrow Airport in Studio 8 at TV Center with a model Concorde in the back of the studio. The monsters were bits of foam. We didn't do the story justice. In order to hide the master's involvement in this story, the first episode did not credit Anthony Ainley as the master. Instead, the credits and radio times listed Leon N Y T A I Y, an anagram of Tony Ainley, as playing Khalid. Keith Drinkle would later play Henry Hallam in the audio play Catch 1782. Topic. Commercial releases Topic. In print A novelization of this serial, written by Peter Grimwade, was published by Target Books in January 1983. Topic. Home media Time Flight was released on VHS in July 2000. A double-pack DVD featuring both Time Flight and Arc of Infinity was released on 6 August 2007. This serial was released as part of the Doctor Who DVD files in issue 135 on 5 March 2014.